In this video, I am going to share you the best insights that we have from neuroscience on how to stop getting high every day or how to stop engaging in the behavior or the substance use of the problematic thing in your life that you want to change. My name is Mike Stroh. I am a therapist. I am someone in long-term recovery from addiction, mental illness, and other mental health problems. I'm a meditation teacher, and I'm just here to do my best to share what I know personally, professionally, spiritually, etc., so that you can live your best life and kind of be the person you want to be, simply put. So a lot of the ideas I'm going to share with everyone today come from Dr. Anna Lemke. She is a addiction specialist psychiatrist from Stanford University. She wrote an amazing book recently called Dopamine Nation. I suggest you go get that. Check it out. It's fantastic. Also, you can click this video or check out my recent conversation with her on the State of Mind podcast, where we discuss a lot of these things in more detail. Okay, that being said, some of the wonderful insights that she shares and she does a great job to give the neuroscience, the personal experience, the psychotherapeutic perspective on all of these things. What she says about what we know, if people want to change their relationship with their substance use or difficult behaviors, there has to be a period of abstinence to reset the dopamine reward, pleasure, pain, balance, and reward pathways that keep us stuck in these patterns of addiction. Now, I know that sounds like a lot, especially for those of us who are really struggling with our use. And we're going to get to how we might start that journey. Okay, so again, you want to learn to stop getting high every day. You want to learn to stop engaging in the behaviors that you're really finding difficult. We're going to go through the neuroscience approach to this from Dr. Anna Lemke, who's a wonderful human being. Okay, so in her book, she uses this great acronym, dopamine. And the first letter, D, stands for data. So what you're going to do is you're going to get out a piece of paper or a notepad or however you write things down, okay? And you're going to be as honest with you can about yourself and just brain dump data. How much am I using this substance or how much am I engaging in this behavior? How often? What is the sort of consumption amount? And how frequently throughout that day? Okay, so is it every day? Is it all day long? Is it only at night? Is it only at lunch and after school and at night or at the end of work? Okay, data, get it all out. How much are you using? In what quantities? How frequently? And just get it on paper, okay? Next one is O. That stands for objective benefits. I really admire this perspective. It's not just um, unique to Dr. Lemke. Generally speaking, whenever we're trying to change any behavior, it is actually really important that we honor what it does for us. Because if we just pretend that it's all bad, then there's a part of ourselves that knows we're lying and knows it's really just another form of self-deception. So the O, objective benefits. Write out all the things that you find good about your behavior of choice or your substance of choice. Often people will say, you know, it helps calm me down. It helps reduce my anxiety. It helps me feel less anxious in social situations. It helps me connect to people. It helps me turn off my brain. It helps me feel whole or connected to a higher presence or being or something like that. So whatever that is for you, honesty, write it all down, objective benefits from my substance of choice. Okay, next one, P. Someone may be able to guess, but P stands for problems associated with the behavior or the using. So this is where, again, you're going to be very honest with yourself. Write out all the problems associated to your using. Oftentimes, people will describe, you know, it interferes with their relationships. Maybe it interferes with their sexual life. Maybe it interferes with their work. Maybe it interferes with their ability to engage in their hobbies or to be present with their family, whatever it is, okay? Got to, again, be honest with yourself to the best of your ability. What are all the problems associated to this behavior? And again, we're just trying to get it out of paper, get it out of our head, put it down in front of us, and one step at a time, go from there, okay? The next letter, A, and A 
Here's the big one, stands for abstinence. Now, as I mentioned earlier, and as is clearly described in the book by Dr. Lemke, in order for the neuropathways, the motivation drives, and the pleasure pain balance in our brain to find homeostasis or to balance back out, it we need a minimum of a 30-day period of abstinence. I would argue you probably want more than that, but hey, that all depends on how far down the path we've gone. So minimum of 30 days of abstinence. Now, if you are engaged in multiple behaviors and you know, you think, or multiple substances, and you think stopping all of those at once is way out of the question, that's what rehab's for, okay? We need really safety, safe place where we can really kind of protect ourselves. Don't turn off the video, okay? Rehab's likely not for you, or it's not for everybody. So if rehab's not in the cards for you, okay, you can just choose the one substance that you're really trying to change your relationship with. Maybe you could try two if that's your situation, Generally speaking, though, if you can stop it all, great. If not, just choose the one substance that's really problematic for you. And you really need to go about finding a way to stop for 30 days. Now, obviously, that's difficult. In the book, Dr. Lemke uses the terminology of self-binding. Really, all that means is putting boundaries and protections around ourselves that are going to help us abstain from the substance or the behavior. So often that means not hanging out with certain people. A nice thing about that is, you know, you want to share maybe with some people, your friends that you're trying to do this. And there you'll get really good insight and information about whether or not these people are actually friends. Okay. Depending on how they react to your efforts, you may even want to get a friend to do it with you. So, Binding, self-binding, again, that's putting protections around ourselves to help us not engage in this behavior. Another way you could conceptualize this, this comes from the 12-step the world, and, and Dr. Anna Lemke is, is very fond of that, and I encourage you, forgive me if I already said this, to watch my recent podcast interview with her. You can check that out. That'll be in the description where we talk about this stuff at length. Okay, she echoes or quotes the 12 step terminology of people, places and things. So you could write down a list of people that are likely to trigger me into engaging in the behavior. You could write down a list of places to avoid and you could write down a list of things that you know you need to probably stay away from or watch your interaction with because what she mentioned, which is very interesting, is that those things are also triggers that get our dopamine craving reward pathway system in motion that can lead us back to using. So it's not always the substance. It's often the things that we associate with the substance. So we're trying to do as much as we can to keep some protection around ourselves during this period of abstinence. Okay. Now let's say you do manage to go through this period of time or you're on your abstinence journey. Maybe you want to pick a date. Maybe you want to pick a situation upon which you're going to take this leap of faith. I get it. It's very scary and it's hard and all that stuff. While at the same time, you got to stop lying to yourself, okay, about your situation. I'll stop tomorrow. I'll stop when this happens. I'll stop when that happens. That is just nonsense and self-deception and denial. Okay. So you got to can't really put it any other way. You do need to take a leap of faith here and see what happens. Okay. So you're on your period of abstinence. The next letter in the acronym is M for mindfulness. And I'll set aside all the pop culture, social connotations that have really tainted that word in our sort of Western hyper materialistic culture in today's world. But really all this idea of mindfulness means here is just to start to notice in yourself what is happening as you are abstaining. How does it make you feel? How does it make you think? What are your behaviors? How does it impact your body sensations? What does withdrawal feel like? What do your emotions feel like? Because like you've been numbing those for a long time. Just what is happening from moment to moment? And can you do your best to notice that with kind, loving, non-judgmental awareness? Really, that's the mindfulness piece, okay? And then moving into the I, which I think the M and the I are kind of the same, but if we're following Dr. Lemke's model here, the I stands for insight. So beyond the mindful awareness and the noticing, are you cultivating any insight into your life, into your mind, into your past, into 
why it is that you were getting high all the time or couldn't stop your behaviors. What is actually happening? We really want to start to understand ourselves and the causes and conditions that led to us getting stuck in this behavior pattern to begin with. Because again, oftentimes it just starts out as genuine fun, seeking of thrill, seeking of connection, different experiences, There's nothing wrong with that, okay? And at the same time, in this process, we're trying to be mindful and trying to gain some insight into what is actually happening with me during this period of time. Okay, then we get to the N in dopamine acronym, and that stands for next steps. So if I'm working with you as a therapist, I might say to you, okay, you've gone on this period of abstinence. You mentioned you didn't necessarily want to stop forever. Cool. Okay, what are the next steps? How are you going to sort of make a plan for your re-engagement with the substance? Okay, maybe it's I'm going to try it once a week. I'm going to try it once a month. I'm going to only use it in this way or that way or whatever. You just need to sort of set a plan for yourself. Okay, and see what happens. Then the next piece is the experiment or the next letter in the acronym, experiment. Okay, so you've set the next steps. You've made a bit of a plan. Now you need to go out in the world and experiment. As Dr. Lemke says, life is an experiment. Okay, our experience in the world is often a, a, an, an ongoing experiment. So this is your opportunity to see, can I control my using? Can I manage this in my life? How is it going now that I've had a period of abstinence? I've reset those reward pathways and I'm just going to see how it goes. Okay, so that's the dopamine acronym. At the end of it, again, as you're experimenting and seeing it all happen, this is where real rigorous and sincere honesty must come in because you need to be honest with yourself about how the controlled using or the experimentation is going. Now, for some people, that works, okay? For other people, maybe it doesn't work. They try again, they fight, they struggle, okay? If you find yourself in the situation where you end up repeating old patterns of behavior. You end up back in these this tug of war and this internal torture and the trying to hide it or manage it or control everything and it's not working. That's usually an indication that a different approach is probably necessary and ideally sort of long-term abstinence. Okay, other people will report trying this, being able to manage, but ultimately they're actually just kind of miserable because all they do is think about it or all they do is kind of try to manage and they get all neurotic about when the next time they're going to get high is or whatever. So if you find yourself in that camp, chances are, again, maybe this just isn't a helpful relationship for you. Okay. Another really interesting thing about this process is that usually what we find in our period of abstinence is actually that life is a lot better without it, okay? There's a lot of uh, data and research around when people stop getting high or using substances, all their kind of neurotic, not all, I should say, many of their neurotic mental health problems tend to go away, which is pretty remarkable, okay? So maybe they don't go away for good, but they're greatly reduced. And when that happens, you actually have the opportunity to address the real problems going on underneath all of the using. So oftentimes, underneath the using, there's other mental health problems going on, there's other life stresses going on. And the only way that we can address those things and really look under the hood is to stop and is to have that period of abstinence so we can actually address what is actually going on. Okay, well, I hope you found that helpful. The dopamine acronym is quite useful. Dr. Anna Lemke's book is Dopamine Nation, Finding Balance in the Age of Indulgence. I really encourage you to check that out. I also encourage you to listen to my recent conversation with her on the state of my podcast. And please ask me any questions about this. How is this going for you? What are you struggling with? Put those in the comments below. I wish you the best on your journey. It's not simple. What do they say? It's simple. It's not easy. Okay. This is a journey. I wish you the best on it. I wish what's best for you and that you get to live the life that you want. And uh, let me know in the comments again, if there's anything we can do to support that, or if you have any questions about this video or this concept or what abstinence might look like to you. All right, take it easy. Peace out. I am very grateful that you watched to the end of this video. 
please click one of the boxes to watch more of our content and otherwise have a great day. Peace out.